All right, hello everybody. Um, been a little while. I have been doing a lot of work on the car, also some biking stuff, and I've filmed quite a bit, but I've been pretty busy, so editing has been kind of on the back burner. But today we are here working on the bends again, and uh, yeah, it's pretty nice out right now, but it's supposed to storm soon. So my plan for today is to try to get the fluid in the rear end and the differential changed before it rains because hopefully this weekend or maybe next week I have a mechanic like a professional mechanic friend of mine that's gonna take a look at the car and a couple weird noises to uh you know help me diagnose that so here we got the car I did finish some of the wheel stuff lowering it and all that but uh I got a finish some of that editing so that'll probably be my next video but anyways it's probably about to be a million degrees in here and uh yeah let's get it started up pull it up in the driveway get her up on the jacks let's see if she starts first try she's like nothing also i got the windows working course the sunroof gotta love that before I get to changing the differential fluid I'm gonna take it for a quick spin around the neighborhood try to get the fluid warm so that it'll drain more easily and more completely so I'm gonna try to do a little time-lapse I think it's not a game, should be good and warm um let's get the jack out get the wheels off and uh get to draining okay so doing differential fluid it probably isn't totally necessary to take both wheels off and have the whole back of the car jacked up but what i've learned from working under a fairly low car like this the higher up and the less things in the way you can have it, uh, the better. And in fact, I think I'm actually going to try to get those jack stands up another notch or two just to make it easier to crawl under there. Okay, so I got it jacked up higher. Um, one thing I always like to do, anytime there's more than one wheel off the car, and especially when it's jacked up this high, is I'll take a we the extra wheel and I'll slide it underneath the car, basically so that if it ever were to fall, while I'm under it, the wheel will kind of catch it. Better to sacrifice a wheel than, you know, your life, so. I'm also gonna wipe out the bottom of the oil pan. Still some little chunks of metal from some other things we did. Um, Cause I'm curious if anything's gonna come out of this diff that shouldn't. All right, so the car's way up there. Got some wheels underneath. And we're gonna be accessing it from this side. Let's see if we can see this. All right. So this is our differential. Um, if you can see right there is our fill plug. Looking at it from the back of the car, the drain plug will be on your passenger side, right there, kind of behind the exhaust. Now I'm fairly certain that both of these use a 14 millimeter hex. So we have that rigged up. And uh, I'm gonna pop out the fill first, and then the drain. I'll probably do the drain from the back, because I think that'll be easier. So, so the fill plug is out. Somewhat interestingly, it started draining already out of the fill plug. So I don't know if that's because of the angle the car is at or if it potentially was overfilled. Now we can get to, oh, see this is gonna be kind of tricky. So we're probably gonna need an extension to be able to get in there or, uh, let's see. Well, I'm gonna have to get a little creative here, but I guess I'll have to figure it out. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is the same trick that I had to use on the uh, transmission for the uh, fill plug, which is I stuck that bit in there. It's kinda in there, it's a little bit weird. Um, and then I just take a 14 millimeter wrench and grab onto the little bit of the hex that is still visible. And then, let's see, got that loose. Let's see what our fluid looks like. Oh, 
Well, I can tell you one thing, it's fairly dark in color. Um, probably a good thing we changed it. Now it's just a matter of whether we find any metal. Hopefully not. I'm not sure if these plugs are uh, magnetized or not, but I don't see anything on either of them, so that's good. I'll give that a couple minutes to drain. And also the fluid is pretty warm, so our little drive around worked. All right, before anyone even says it, I realize the car is not at an ideal angle. It is slightly nose down, you know, the driveway is on quite a, quite a bit of a hill, but I'm working with what I can here. I'm not trying to do it out in the middle of the street. I don't have a shop. I mean, one way or another, we're gonna get the majority of fluid out. It was the same story with the transmission. Um, better than nothing, right? The oil is pretty much done draining. And uh, taking a look at it now, I don't notice any major chunks of metal. There are a lot of really small flakes. Some of them might even be left over from what I didn't wipe up very well. But it does have quite an odd color. Some of it's kind of this weird golden color. Some of it's almost like a bluish. Um, not sure really what that is. If it's just a mixture of two different oils maybe or, or what. Um, but either way, we're putting some fresh stuff in there right now. Um, hopefully it'll make a difference. Um, I don't know if you remember that noise I was talking about when engine braking in first gear. And I think it's coming kind of from the rear end. So cross the fingers. Hopefully that'll go away. But I got a feeling it's not just the oil. We have the Valvoline gear oil here, ADW90. Uh, I looked up, you know, on lots of forums what's recommended. And this falls right in the range of what people were saying. And there should be just enough, and I happen to just have it on me, so grab that. And I also got a new pump thing. Now we have upgraded, so this should be able to thread right onto that, and I can just pump it right in. And luckily it doesn't even take all that much from what I've read, so it should go fairly quick, which is good because the rain seems to be moving in. All right, so the drain plug is back in. I'm going to crawl under here and get to pumping. All right, this thing is very nice. Look at that golden nectar. So we'll just pump until it starts dripping out of the uh, fill plug. And that should be pretty close to the correct volume, even though I have the car slightly on an angle, but it should be close enough. Well, as luck would have it, doesn't seem like that was quite enough gear oil. It's gotta be close, but the rain is coming in quite quickly. And uh, I'm gonna try to make a really fast trip to AutoZone and get this done before I get wet. All right, be right back. All right, just went to AutoZone real fast. Got some of the same stuff, although this looks a little newer. Um, same brand, same weight and all that. Hopefully that won't matter. Probably just the same stuff anyways. So let's go top it off. All right, so we got it filled till it started leaking. I popped the fill plug in quick so it wouldn't make too much mess even though I already kind of did. And uh, yeah, I'll tighten that down, pop the wheels back on, and then we'll take it for a spin, see if anything changes. Okay, it's a little windy out also, sorry. Um, but to be honest, I'm not really expecting any major improvements here because the old fluid that came out didn't look that bad. It was a little miscolored, I guess, um, but nothing too alarming. So I'm gonna take a first spin right now and uh, report back. So I took the car for a ride. Um, unfortunately, the, the big noise that happens in first gear uh, under engine braking is still there. Kind of expected that. Although, it, and it might just be in my head, but it seems like it, there's a little bit less noise going on. Kind of like rolling in first, like low speeds with the clutch in, but it's really hard to tell. Um, anyways, started raining, so I'm done for the day. Although, I think I am gonna attach the second part of my headlight install to the end of this video. So stay tuned if you want to see how I wired all that up 
and cut to that right now. All right, so finally getting around to finishing up the headlights. If you recall before, we had an issue where the new lights have a different sort of plug adapter thing than the old ones. So I got a little creative and uh, I'll show you how you can do this. Definitely a little bit sketchy, but it works. I've already tested it. Um, and with pretty much no additional stuff needed, you'll need a bulb for the new light, but it's expected. So if you look at the old headlight, it's this whole encompassed kind of, I don't know what you want to call this, but it has that little three pin plug. So I found some that have the same sort of deal that work with the new headlights. If you notice on the new headlights, when you pop off that cover, there's kind of this little, uh, this little plate that it all sits into and then the clip holds it in. So the head, those bulbs fit perfectly and uh, got it plugged in. The other bulb is the same from the old headlight. The tricky part was kind of tracing all these wires. Um, the newer style headlight has this extra piece, which to be honest, I'm not super sure what this is. Maybe you could put another bulb in there, but the car's actual wiring for the headlights doesn't have enough wires for that. That would basically be this extra pin that I pointed out before. But to put it very simply, what you have to do, assuming all the colors are the same, um, or you could, you know, translate it if the colors are different, is line it up just like this. Now we're looking at the driver's side headlight. I'm about to do the passenger side, but basically you want to do it as such. So you have yellow bottom left, the green slash gray bottom right, and then that white one, and then the brown, which I believe is the ground. The brown is the same throughout in here. Um, all the, and the yellow also matches up, but you know, you have to do a little checking on that, but it works, as I said, verified. So now, and uh, also those little connectors from the car were initially inside of this thing. So I just popped them out and obviously that's not gonna work anymore. But I think what I'm gonna do is, either I'm gonna just solder them right onto there for now, or I'm gonna maybe get some sort of a, like a shrink wrap, something of the sort. Just make sure that's kind of secure. Um, you know, and kind of safe from the elements. So anyways, that's what we did and it works. So I'm digging into the other side now. Um, a couple of the wires are slightly different colored, but the plug seems to be exactly the same. And it's not even, you know, mirrored. It's exactly the same. So we should be able to just plug in exactly the same and uh, we'll see if it works. Um, kind of interesting thing though, I found this little piece of wire that's just loose. It looks like there's a ground and a blue wire in here. No idea what it's supposed to go to. Um, it has some little like ends on there. Uh, if anyone has any ideas <laughs> what that might be supposed to go to kind of runs down uh runs down into this little piece of cover and then i don't know it ties into this whole wiring harness but i'm kind of curious where this was supposed to go <laughs> all right guys that's it for now thanks for watching be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and uh subscribe to see more next up i have the video where i drop the car the rest of the way do quite a bit of body work to get the wheels to clear um, that one's a pretty intense video, so that's coming up soon. And, yeah, until next time.